let's take a look at our top selections. Hi, everyone. There are three stakes races on Saturday at Santa Anita. We'll take them all separately, starting with the grade three Daytona stakes. And I'm not going to pretend that all three of these stakes races offer great wagering opportunities because they don't. And I also will not ignore the elephant in the room because there is one and he's huge. And it's the fact that California is in crisis mode right now with a horse shortage. And it has really become apparent this weekend, Memorial Day weekend, we have seven graded stakes races scheduled over the next three days, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. We're going to have short fields in probably every single one of them. The three graded stakes races on Saturday attracted a total of 14 entrants. Two of the stakes races have five starters. One of them has four starters. So it is what it is. And you can bet on these small fields at short prices or sit them out. It's uh, certainly a personal decision, but we will be talking about all three of them. And we'll start with the grade three Daytona stakes. It's for turf sprinters and it's race number five, six and a half furlongs. And this field, unfortunately, does not include the top sprinter top turf sprinter in California. He's Gregorian Chant. He's won his last three starts and he's headed to Belmont Park for the $400,000 grade one Jiper on June 5th. One of the reasons, or there are a lot of reasons why fields are short. One is Gregorian Chant heading out of town for $400,000 pot instead of staying home for $100,000. Can you blame them? Horse shortage is another reason. The Lasix policy, the new Lasix policy has some significance. And also Tech Sutton Horse Transportation Company has really kind of thrown the industry into a very difficult spot because one of the leases on their airplanes was not renewed in time. And so travel from coast to coast, which used to be done with the snap of the finger, has become far more complicated and far more expensive when you have to go through FedEx. So there are a lot of reasons why these fields are short. And again, it is what it is. So let's go ahead and take a look at the field for the Daytona Stakes. And it's race number five on Saturday. And frankly, it's it, there were 13 nominations to this race, by the way, and we ended up with five in the entry box. Two of them are claiming horses. Uh, Jamming Eddie and Commander are claiming horses. Number one, Majestic Eagle is a route horse. He's using the Daytona as a comeback prep. Bombard, we'll talk about him in just a second. And Law Abiding Citizen making his comeback with a lot of trepidation from his connections because Law Abiding Citizen is a seven-year-old with 28 starts and all 28 starts that he has made in his career have been with Lasix. Now he's coming in off a layoff with no Lasix for the first time in his career. So it's kind of a mishmash of a group. I think there's a potential standout. It all, I guess it all depends on whether a Law Abiding Citizen shows up or not. But the horse I'm referring to is Bombard. I expect him to be heavily favored. He's a lightly raced eight-year-old. He's only made 17 starts, five wins and six seconds. And when he is on his game, he's just about as good as any turf sprinter around, certainly in California. And in his most recent comeback, Bombard's comeback, he gave Gregorian Chant all that he could handle. It was in an open allowance race. It was kind of a graded stakes caliber type of field. It was an open allowance, and it was on April 25th. Let's go ahead and roll the tape, and you'll watch Bombard having taken the lead into the lane, and Gregorian Chant on the far outside. Gregorian Chant was odds on in this field and expected to blow them away, but watch Bombard fight back on the inside. Gregorian Chant came to him, looked like he was just going to blow right past, but Bombard fought back on the inside, and he actually galloped out in front of the field. Now, let's go back to last year, and here's Bombard at Kentucky Downs running one of the best races of his career. It was in the grade three turf sprint, and he's on the lead every step. He's digging in. He's fighting back. They're going six furlongs on a soft course at Kentucky Downs. This is turf course at Kentucky Downs, I've heard from horsemen that do not give it favorable reviews, especially when it's soft like this. But Bombard last year ran super in defeat. Imprentice won the race, front run the Fed, dead heated with Bombard. The reason we show those last two replays is just to illustrate how good Bombard is when he fires. And based primarily on his most recent start, I think he's going to be very tough to beat. There's not a whole lot of speed. 
in this small five horse field. But one of the speed horses, in addition to Bombard, I wouldn't call law abiding citizen a speed horse per se, although maybe he is, because let's go ahead and talk a little bit about law abiding citizen. 28 starts into his career. He has won a couple of graded stakes races, including graded stakes on grass. He's coming in off a long layoff. He hasn't raced since last summer. And speaking with trainer Mark Glatt this week, he is very frightened to run law-abiding citizen, first start back without using Lasix. If he's, se he's seven years old, if he should bleed first start back at age seven, that might be it for him. And that's really a direct, virtually a direct quote from uh, trainer Mark Ladd. But law-abiding citizen one year ago at Del Mar in a couple of the top dirt sprints of summer, the grade one Bing Crosby and the grade two triple bend, he established himself as not only a good grass horse, but also a good dirt horse. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Pat O'Brien on August 29th last summer and law abiding citizen down on the inside, Flagstaff to his outside and CZ Rocket three wide and law abiding citizen gave these two top class sprinters all he could handle and finished third. This race followed his first start of summer, which was in the Bing Crosby on August 1st. And once again, Bombard battling back in between horses on the inside. And he runs very well in defeat and finished a good third in the Bing Crosby. That's Law Biden Citizen. Back-to-back -back thirds last summer in the premier dirt sprints of the season. Collusion Illusion wins that race. And Lexingtonian came rolling late, but Bombard ran, excuse me, Law Biden Citizen ran well to finish third. Now he's coming in off a layoff, and this is a veteran horse that typically races his way into shape. Glatt is convinced that he is ready to fire first start back, but the no Lasix rule has really kind of thrown a, a, a monkey wrench into the things. So when all is said and done, I really would be surprised if any horse other than Bombard or Law Biden Citizen wins this race. And the fact that Bombard has raced previously without Lasix and run well, and his sharp current form, and the pace scenario suggests to me that Bombard is the most probable winner. I don't think I'm giving away any secrets in the Daytona Stakes. It's one of several stakes races this weekend with small fields and short prices. Law Biden Citizen is tough. He's drawn outside. I'm not convinced although Glatt is, that he will fire his top shot first star back. So when all is said and done, it looks like Bombard, number two Bombard, the likely favorite and the most probable winner of the Daytona Stakes, race five Saturday at Santa Anita.